Now, speaking of downloads, let me open that up and open up, say, a PDF. And let me see, let's pick up this one right here. And so here's a, a map of Monterey. And I'm just going to shrink this down just a, a little bit. But the new preview, which is your PDF viewer, has a couple of things that's added on to it. One of the things is you can do file import from scanner. So you can try to do that from a scanner. Uh, you don't have to go into Adobe in order to create a PDF from something. But you've also got the ability to annotate. So I can zoom in on a portion here, click on the zoom a couple times. And I can say, um, I stayed here. So I can add a little annotation. And that's what this little button's for. I can click on that. And what I can do is I can add a little pointer and say, here is, oops, wrong direction. Uh, hit delete on that. Got to go from the beginning to the point where you're trying to go to. And now I have a nice big arrow. And then I can go over here to the text box, click on that. And then I can pop in a, a little text thing. And I can say, here is where I was not where I am. I'm not on the beach right now. <laughs> and of course, you can select all the text. And remember me talking about this before, uh, show fonts. And that's where I can adjust this and make it more like 14 point. And I can also change the color. Say, let's make it green, blue, purple, whatever. So there you go. So there's different ways that you can annotate this and then save it. So if someone sends you a PDF, you can add additional things, you know, like say this map. I can say, here's where you should try to pick up the bus. And then you can take the transit system over to here. And then you can get over to the seaside, that sort of thing. So it's got a nice little feature that you can annotate. I think that's a big plus to be able to, to mark that up. Because if you have students send you, um, or anyone sends you a document and you tell them to save it as a PDF because you may not have Microsoft Word, this is a way that you can still mark up what they did on their on their uh, document. So this would be good for writing teachers. This might be a viable tool. And it's built into the OS. It's right there. So close out of that. I want to say don't save on that. In um, the Safari browser is the next thing I want to talk about. They've added things. Now, you remember before, you might have seen this before. There's always this thing called services. And there's always kind of a bunch of stuff in there, like grab, things that just didn't quite work right, uh, that didn't apply to this application. Well, now they're application specific. And so the services show up based upon the application or what you're doing. Now, I don't see all the services here because I haven't done anything in Safari. But if I was to come along here and highlight this text, then I can, or even this web address. And by the way, this is a web address for incompa software incompatibility for Snow Leopard. So if you're using, oh boy, let's pick something, Adobe Acrobat 8.1.6, there are some incompatibility issues. And it explains some of it over here on the side. So you can check that out. That might be real helpful for you. Again, I'll have that link for you on our show, uh, on our webpage, askthetechies.com, uh, for this episode on Snow Leopard. Um, but anyway, I can highlight this text. And then when I go to Safari and go to Services this time, uh, services. Now I can do things like make a new sticky note. So I want to remind myself to come back to this website and do that. So I can do that. So it pops up a sticky note. Now I have that and I can stick that in the corner so I don't remember to, don't forget to go back to that site or, or, or do something later with that. Or maybe I want to email this to somebody. I said, oh, you're not sure if your software works? Here's a place where you can tell. So you can, hi again, have it highlighted, go to services, and you can say, uh, new email with selection. And it'll open your email application and send that uh, in the, have that, uh, whatever you highlighted, whether it's, you know, three paragraphs or whether it's just a web address, that's a way that you can do that. You know, before, lots of times on, to email a story, you know, you find like on CNN or something, you have to, I don't want to give them my email address. I'm always afraid I'm going to get spammed or something like that. So this is a way that you can actually just copy it. You open your email program, boom, you send it off to them. So it makes it very handy. Uh, different things that you can do. So that, you know, look it up in the dictionary if you can run across a word that you don't know. So there's little services like that. Uh, one last thing I do want to talk about is iChat. I don't know if you've used iChat before, but iChat is a nice little program built into the Mac that allows you to use things like AOL Instant Messenger accounts to uh, do instant messaging. So text messaging, that sort of thing. But iChat is a lot more powerful. If you didn't know, you can send documents back and forth with iChat. You can also share your computer screen with iChat. So if I'm iChatting right now with, that is instant messaging, <laughs> with, uh, let's say, my, my mom, and she's having a problem with her computer, and she has a fast enough connection, um, then we can actually uh, 
I can actually take control of her computer screen and try to fix her computer. Now, she does have to have a more recent version of iChat in order to do that, but it's been around for about a year uh, or more, I think. So it's kind of a way for me to take control of her computer screen, fix whatever she's having a problem with, and then she can disconnect me from not, to no longer have access. But iChat's also great for audio chats and video chats. But one of the problems I had with video chats is sometimes your internet connection is not very fast upload. You have to have a good upload speed to send your video out to the other person. So it often starts breaking up and it doesn't do so well. It used to take about 900, um, so what was that again? 900 kilobits per second stream up in order for you to send your video. It was nice quality video. But now it's just as nice quality video, but it uses only one third the amount, 300 kilobits per second. So that means if you're on a slower connection, you're more likely to be able to do video chatting, which is really nice, to be able to see the person's face, that kind of interaction that you can't get through text, that kind of communication, that opportunity. So it's a nice little feature that's built in. Um, so if you have iChat, that's a great way to do that, to, to try to communicate with other people and, and it won't break up on you quite as much as it used to. So you may want to give it another shot if you, if you run into technical glitches with it before. Um, one other thing that about uh, Snow Leopard is that it has a new version called QuickTime X. I'm not going to go into that today. I'm going to cover that in another episode because there's a lot to know about the changes in QuickTime. So I'll cover that in our next episode. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to send them to me at questions at askthetechies.com or leave comments on our blog. All right? Thanks. Thank you.